For this topic, we're going to look at how to back up group policy objects using PowerShell. So on our domain controller here, if we go into the group policy management console, we'll see that we've got a bunch of group policies which have already been pre-created. In order to back these up, if we go to the ISE, the first thing we need to do is make sure we've imported the group policy module. Once we've done that, we can look at a command called get GPO. If we use the all parameter, it will return all of the GPOs with a bunch of information about their creation date, their owner, etc. And we have another command here called backup GPO. So if we feed all of those GPOs with get GPO into the backup GPO command and give it a path, it should back up our group policies. So on the right hand side here, if we see this GPO backup directory, we'll see a bunch of ID folders with the group policies in all backed up, ready to be restored when we need them. However, if we run this command again, we'll see we've now got double the amount of directories because it recreates all those directories again with a different ID. And if you keep running it, it will just keep creating those directories. So if we delete those down, we can look at creating them into a named directory. So if we run line 14 here, we can use the get GPO command to get the GPO called HR and push it into a variable. So if we look at that variable, we'll notice one of the fields is display name, which is the name of the GPO, obviously. So we can use this display name and our path for our folder and create a backup destination variable with the destination of that GPO. And then we can use that on line 18 here to create a new directory. So now on the right hand side here, we have a new HR directory that we've just created. So now all we need to do is feed that GPO variable into backup GPO with the path for that directory, and it should back up our group policy. So if we go into that HR folder, underneath we've got an ID again with the files ready to restore. So problem with this is if we run that command over and over again, we will get lots of different folders appearing with a new ID each time. So we can also add a modification time to this. So if again we use get GPO to get that HR GPO and look at the variable that we've stored it into, we'll notice that we've got a modification time there. But we need to strip some of those characters out. Some of the colon characters and the slashes, etc., aren't good in directory names. So we need to use a couple of lines of code here, line 28 and 29, in order to strip out those characters. So if we run those two lines of code, we'll notice modification time is now stripped of all those unusual characters. So if we take that modification time and the group policy display name and push that all into a variable called backup destination, we can then use that backup destination in order to create a new directory. So we'll notice on the right hand side here, as well as those IDs that we had before, we've now got a directory with the date and time on it. All we need to do now is pipe that GPO variable into backup GPO with that backup destination, and it should back it up into there. So if we explore into that directory, we've now got another backup of that group policy. So one other thing we can do with this replace that we've used previously is to use that against the group policy name itself. So if we go back to our group policy management console, we'll notice that some of these group policies have slashes and exclamation marks and other things that don't work well in directories. So we can use that pattern and that replace parameter in order to replace the odd characters in the GPO name. So if we run those three lines of code, and look at the display name, we'll see at the bottom there that we've stripped out all of the unusual characters, the non-alphanumerics. And again, if we use the modification time and the display name, create a new directory and back up the GPO, we'll notice that in our GPO backup folder, we've now got a folder called add shortcut. And that folder name's had all of its characters stripped out. Under there, we've got a date and time directory with the backup underneath.
So all we need to do now is take all of those group policies and put them through a for loop to, in order to back them up. So on line 73 here, we can use a little bit of logic in order to uh, check whether the directory already exists. So we're not creating lots of duplicates each time. So if we run that code, we'll very quickly go through. And if we go back to our GPO backup directory, we'll see we've got a directory for each one of the GPOs. Underneath there is a date and time with the backup files underneath there. So if we go back to our group policy management console and edit one of these GPOs and just add something to it, and close that down and go back to our code. If we run that code again, we should see in our HR folder here that we've got two versions here, the new one and the old one, along with all of the IDs that we created before. So if we strip these old IDs out and run this code over and over again, we'll see that we aren't getting any extra folders appearing. So just to prove that this works, if we go back to our group policy management console and delete this HR policy. So if we right click on our group policy objects, go to manage backups and browse to our location, we'll see that under HR, we've got two versions. I'm going to choose the first version and click on OK. It will give us the backup that we did originally and we can click on restore at the bottom here and OK and that will have successfully restored our HR group policy. So that's been how to back up group policy objects using PowerShell. Thanks for watching.